Hi everyone, it's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. I'm an intuitive consultant and psychic advisor. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for the likes, the shares, the comments, and the new subscribers and current subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, why don't you subscribe? It's free. Also, I just started memberships. So if you want to know what that's about, click the join button below and it'll give you all the information you need. Okay. Now, in the meantime, I apologize for the show being late. Like I've said before, sometimes me putting up a private show is like more delays than a Trump trial. Kidding. So I started doing the show on Friday and I'm glad I, I waited and we did it because on Friday I was kind of venting about SCOTUS and about the polls and how they're saying Trump is beating Biden. And I'm going to tell you right now, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Cause that's what I had to do because I was so mad and I calmed down. And then when I watched the show on Saturday, when I was going to do some editing, it wasn't me. It wasn't a good show. And I decided, you know what? I have some clients after this. I'll just you to do the show on Sunday. Sunday ended up being what I call a peppermint patty day. And why a peppermint patty day? No, they're not. They're not a um, advertiser. I get migraines. And sometimes the meds that I've been prescribed just lay me out like a zombie. And... If there's any difference between me and a zombie, I'm not sure. But anyway, so here I be, and I'll take a peppermint patty out of the freezer because the peppermint helps with the migraine and the chocolate tastes so good. And then I'll just crawl back in bed. I don't have to be a zombie. And I just rest and took it easy. So that's what I did on Sunday. So it is now Monday morning on the 4th, March 4th. And I'm redoing the show. And then I have some clients later on. Then after that, I'm doing a show with Deanne tonight. And so I will do the show. I will edit the show tonight after Deanne's show and then get it up. So depending on how long it takes to upload and all that kind of stuff, hopefully it'll be here by Tuesday morning. Probably. Anyway, so as I said, breathe in, breathe out. Because the SCOTUS stuff... And the polling stuff just had me biting nails or spitting nails because I don't know who they poll. I don't know where they get this information from. This is not what I get when I look for information. Now, people ask me, well, where does this come from? I tell people, basically, I make everything up and hope it happens. But then I tease and I say, well, my spirit guides, you know, Manny, Moe, and Jack, and um, I'll use cards sometimes, uh, a little bit letter on deck. Once in a while, I'll pull a tarot card. Very rare. But a lot of times I also use, see it back there? My magic, it's not a magic eight ball. It's my crystal ball. And, but I have used the magic eight ball at times. In fact, I had a lady who called me once and she was very indignant. And she asked me a question and then snapped her fingers and said, where's the answer? I was like, excuse me, it takes time to put water in my magic eight ball. Hung up on her and gave her her deposit back. Or refunded her money. So yeah, people are crazy. But anyway, it's, it's par for the course. People are hurting. And especially when you get news about SCOTUS. Now, I'm glad, like I said, I, I delayed the show and redid it. Because this morning they announced about the Colorado decision with SCOTUS. People are freaking out about it, that Trump got his way. First of all, in all honesty, when I did the show about a, couple, about a month ago, I said, as far as SCOTUS and Colorado, I feel they don't want to touch it. And I'll hand it to Congress. So if you really look what they did, 9-0, he has, he can stay on the ballots. To me... It's like they're trying to divide with well, a state thing versus a federal thing. So let it go to Congress. So that's the way I'm reading it. Okay. 
And if you think about it, wouldn't you rather Trump be on the ballot and lose bigly to Joe Biden? Think about it. Then again, when I did my very first show with Linda, I've said this many times, back in July, I said, we have to be alive to be a president. I did say that. So anyway, I've always said, I don't see him crossing the finish line. So why is Nikki Haley staying around? Because I think she thinks the same thing, that he's going to collapse. Um, either have a mental breakdown, did somebody say dementia? Just kidding, not. Entertainment purposes only. And I think she's waiting for him to crash and burn, and she'll be the last gal standing. But if you listen to what she says and what she stands for, it's all MAGA. It's scary as hell. So, but in a way, I was happy that she got 63% of the Republican vote in D.C. in the primary. So we'll see what happens tomorrow on Tuesday with Super Tuesday. I think she may surprise some people. Now, I was wrong. I thought she would win South Carolina. And I thought it would be close in New Hampshire. But I don't see him crossing the finish line. Yes, we make mistakes. At that moment, what the guides or what's being predicted is focused on things at that moment. Then little things can change. And that little thing called free will. And with Trump doing his crash and burn, I don't know if he's going to be around. I don't wish him ill, sort of. And we'll just see what happens. Okay, but keep the faith, people. Even if he's on the ticket, even if he were to make it across the finish line, he's not going to finish. Okay, or well, makes it to the finish line. He's going to be behind Biden, and I feel that Biden's going to win in larger numbers than he did last time. So, yay! And we get the House and the Senate back, yay! And that's when the things are going to change. So, also, I did get lots and lots of questions about the immunity stuff, like Wendy Ballantine. Uh, Supreme Court delay, delay, delay till April 22nd to hear Trump immunity and case. Unbelievable. Will Trump win? What will happen to Jack Smith? And then Mary Ann's, please ease my mind about the Supreme Court. I am so pissed. Then we have Marilyn. Oh, kind Arthur, will the corrupt SCOTUS delay the trial at 45, or will he be evicted by Jack Smith before the election? America needs to know justice. Then I like this one from Sandra. This is a very dark Supreme Court justice delay is justice denied day. Biden's first action on receiving absolute immunity should be to remove these corrupt and bought so-called Supreme Court justices from their seats. Of course, they are not planning to grant this immunity, but they are showing their complete Donald bias. Delay, delay, delay. More fodder to expand the court and investigate these corrupt justices. And I got a lots and lots of more questions like this, um, including Roxanne. Thank you, Arthur. Could you see if we can make a difference by contacting our representatives and senators to make pressure on SCOTUS to change their date for sooner and let them know we are not happy with them. I'm so distressed by this news today. The lawyers are saying this means the only trial that will go before the election will be the hush money case. Well, the hush money case is March 25th, the day of an eclipse, and that's solid. He will be convicted. However, that's a Totally different stuff than January 6th. Now, I understand everyone freaking out about they could have waited a week, but they're waiting till April 22nd to hear the oral arguments. Now, when I looked at this, like everybody's saying, well, it's basically they're playing his game, they're looking out for him. I feel that some of them are afraid. And some, there's two definitely are playing his game. But in the long run, it doesn't matter. They're not going to give him absolute immunity. 
Now, they'll hear the arguments in April 22nd. What my guides keep on telling me is that it can come down to May that they'll make the announcement. There's no immunity. However, if they wait even to June 30th and announce there's no immunity, there is still time for the trial to start the January 6th. Because if it's June 30th, you know, Judge Chuckin, July 1st is going to start doing some. Number one. Number two, she originally stated that she would give them 88 days to prepare. That's not etched in stone. That's not rule of law. That was just at that moment, her preference to help them. She can turn around and say, you know what? I'm going to give you 30 days. I'm going to give you 40 days. I'm going to give you maybe 60 days. But whatever it is, it may not be the full 90 days. So July, August, September. Okay. So I actually feel this is going to be heard end of August and September. And when that happens, they'll maybe saying it's not fair that you promised. No, she just stated something. She can change her mind. She's a judge. Number one. Number two, Jack Smith knows exactly what's going on here. He's got every game plan, every scenario worked out. So whatever happens, he's still going to try this case before the election. Now, if they say, well, that's a 60-day rule, there is no 60-day rule. It's protocol. And Trump has broken so much protocol that who cares? We're going to have the trial. But there's another thing. If you start a trial before the 60 days, it has to be completed. You can't stop and say, okay, there's a trial, there's an election, so we have to stop the trial. No, it keeps on going. Now, over the weekend, there were two wonderful lawyers that really went into detail, and I would suggest looking them up. One was from Midas Touch, Michael Popak, uh, Legal AF on Midas Touch, and the other one was Glenn Kirshner. They really broke it down, the whole thing. But they also broke down and remind us that Trump had a gazillion things he was trying to appeal with the Supreme Court. However, the Supreme Court only took one. So everything else is null and void. It's not appealed. The one thing is, can a former president, blah, 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 the former president. And also it's about official duties. So what was he doing on January 6th, an official duty. The way that question is written, there can only be one answer. No. All right? So do not freak out. He's not getting immunity. Even if they wait till January 30th, the trial is still going to be heard, is what my guides tell me. Now, the other thing I keep on getting is do I see Trump getting actual jail time? Amy Warren's asking. Carol Bark, do you see him getting convicted before September 24th? I mean, 2024. And um, it seems the J6 case will go after the election. No, this is what I'm trying to tell everybody. No, it's not. And which month and Dina Bird's Burns, will which month will Jack Smith get this damn thing started? Um, and she also calls my, you know, what would you guys say, Manny Moe and Jack? And who knew he'd be fighting political hacks on the Supreme Court? I think he was aware of it. I really do. I think that's why he filed with them first, just to play their hand. And he filed with them and the appellate court in D.C. So... I feel now the whole thing is, yes, I feel he's going to be convicted. Now there's four cases. I mean, there's four indictments. I feel a solid on three. There's one I'm not sure. Okay. However, everybody's asking about what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And as long as the statement storm, like Baron Barbrell, Janet, 
Sorry, I'm lousy with names. The, the Stormy Daniels payment goes into mid-March, and will there be a criminal conviction? Possibly. May or June 2024? Yes. Yes. There will be a conviction. However, and that's the hush money thing, um, it will be held before the election, and the Supreme Court will not be successful in walking immunity until after the election. Okay? So just Calm down. Calm down. Now, the other thing is, regardless of what they're throwing at the fans for DA Fonnie Willis in Georgia, I do not see her getting thrown off the case. I don't see it. And so that moves on in August. And that's a state thing, not federal. But it's still going to impact, you know, if there's a conviction, and I feel there will be. And with a lot of other actors involved. But Baby Blue asks, um, Ken Jesbro has now been outed for his ex-account under an assumed name. Will he lose his deal in the Georgia case for lying and have to face prosecution? I'm not sure. When I really looked at this, I felt, you know what? They have him on a leash. Now they have him on a tighter leash. And yeah, so I they may hold something over his head, but this guy, you know, there's a line from Deliverance, make him squeal like a pig. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Now, <laughs> Crazy Shark 22, hi, Arthur. Do you ever see Election Day being a federal holiday? It's a good question. And I say yes. I feel it's going to be voted on towards summer of 2026 that Election Day becomes a national holiday, a federal holiday. Okay? So, good question. Then, Aftrom Farm 63. Hi, Arthur. My question is, can you tell if Trump and Republicans will resort to cheating again with the upcoming election in November? I don't think you need to be a psychic to answer this one. What do you think? They can try. They're not going to get away with anything. People are watching. They can try. It's not going to work. Even if they were to try, I'm telling you right now, the guys keep on saying Biden is our next president. Okay? And he's going to win. Bigly. Now, PJS777, huge fan, big fan. I love these Bigly fans. Um, just kidding. The most wonderful fan you'll ever see until your next one. <laughs> That's cute. Question. Do you see an exodus of politicians, some media types, and various far-right operatives moving to Russia? Specifically, when the shite hits the fan... And we see old guys like Bannon, Giuliani, Flynn, et al. land in prison. Will the others decamp like rats off a sinking dip ship? Cute. Um, no. No. It's not. The, it's like Irma Bombeck said. The grass is always greener over the septic tank. Believe me. The propaganda they're putting out about. Tucker Carlson that Russia's so great and grocery stores are cheaper. Propaganda. I don't see him moving there. I don't see anything moving there because, let's face it, there's nothing to move to. Like, there was that Canadian family, the farmer, who got tired of seeing fearful of the pride flags. So he took his 10 kids and his wife, and they moved to Russia. You know what they say? One out of every ten? Just saying. So his ten kids, they moved to Russia. Their money gets frozen in their accounts. They can't speak the language. It's a living hell for them. There you go. So do you really think people are going to be moving there? No. 
I don't see it. Patty S212. Oh my God, this is so fun. Will Mike Johnson's sins be outed this spring? That is so clever the way you worded that. Yes, I feel his sins will be outed in the spring. As I've said many times, when I first heard his name, within 10 minutes, I was on my community board going, don't panic, scandal, he's going to be gone around the end of May or in May. Now, if he's not gone in May, it'll be by July. And I said there'd be a whisper campaign at the end of February, January and February, which there was. And I see him gone. And I see a lot of stuff is going to be coming out. And he's going to be out of his position as Speaker of the House. Now, what the guys have always showed me is that Mike Johnson leaves. There's a Republican placeholder. It's not there very long. And then I have always felt Hakeem Jeffries is going to be the next Speaker of the House. However, I have always felt somehow he gets that position before the election. Now, it might be my liver backing up from the 70s or I'm on crack, but that's the way I see it. Okay? And it can only mean that, A, Republicans are leaving the House, and Democrats have more majority, or, as last time, when they were voting, he had more votes than everybody, but they wouldn't put him in. So let's just say Mike Johnson will be outed from his position. Okay. Now, Donna D. Hi, Arthur. Do you see Mitch McConnell being healthy enough to make it to November? He will make it to November one way or another. Even if he's frozen solid, he's going to make it to November. At the same time, I did a show weeks ago um, with Colleen Coolcrone and a group of others. And the question was, when do we see Mitch McConnell leaving? And they were all saying 2025. I said 2027. Colleen got kind of upset. And I said, I didn't say that's when he's leaving the Senate. You just asked me when he was leaving. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Don't wish anybody ill will. I don't know who's going to send the turtle food anymore but we'll see he's gone but sometimes it's better to know the devil you know than the one you don't so we'll see what happens in the meantime susan holland arthur can you tell us what will happen in texas during the 2024 election will we turn purple at least and will Governor Abbott start losing power and not run for re-election in 26? Glad you are back. Me too. Thanks. Um, I'm going to it this way. I think there's going to be a new, there'll be two state flags for Texas. The Texas state flag. And then there's going to be one with Barney, the dinosaur. So I think that'll answer your question. And as far as Governor Abbott, I think he's going to go for indictment. I don't think he's going to get reelected at all. I don't know if he's going to be able to get to 2026. Okay. So again, entertainment is only, this is only from, you know, some wacky guy that says he's a psychic and talks to guides named Manny, Mo and Jack. Take it from there. But in the meantime, bye-bye. Now this one got me a little upset. Jenny KW. Or LH. I never follow California governor until he started helping Biden's campaign. Is he really a bad governor? All we hear is how homeless taxes and crime is bad because of him. Thank you. Were you at CPAC listening to Bannon this whole time? Don't recall, well, no pun intended, but the Republicans tried to recall him and it didn't work. It's because he's successful. Now, everyone talks about homeless, taxes, crime, blah, 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 blah. You do realize California is a huge state. 
And a lot of people, there would be a hundred things that he's working on, but that hundred and one thing people will point out, he's not doing enough. So I believe there's a surplus here. He's a good, decent man as far as I'm concerned. But when I look at it through the eyes of my guides and as a psychic, he's solid. It's all subterfuge. It's all, you know, oh my God, everything's so bad. Every, like when you heard Trump talking about going through Washington, D.C. and there's graffiti on the walls and people urinating in the streets and blah, 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 blah. Really? Then why does he want to become president there? Why does he want to live there? It's so bad. And he's saying it's all gone downhill after he left. Walls are crumbling. I mean, the, make, the way he makes it sound, it's like, you know, some apocalyptic movie, you know? Biden's not this terrorist that he makes him out to be. Again, he's winning. So as far as Gavin Newsom is concerned, I feel it's going to be very important to the Democratic Party. He does a lot. And no, he's not a bad governor at all. Okay? Even though they're going to try and get him, oust him again, it's not going to happen. So there you go. I live in Los Angeles. I've lived for over 30 years. Believe me, I've seen Gray Davis. I've seen Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've seen other governors. Believe me, Newsom is pretty good. Alrighty. Now, this next question or questions, because you know I'm going by topics, is a little hard for me because I'm not the greatest when it comes to health. I mean, I do what I do. And then I refer people to some healers that I know. But Nani Duda, 3028. Hi, Arthur. Can you please read? Catherine, Princess of Wales, health condition. Yeah, I got a lot of questions about her. Please read about Kate Middleton from Hannah in Florida. And if Harry ever will reunite with Prince William. Also on the subject, Mary Phillips. I love your channel. Thank you. Do you please read on Prince William? It seems to me so many people get distorted and overly negative info in the media about him and believe it. Is he really jealous of Harry? And is Catherine really a racist? Then Sylvia asks, um, there are rumors that Princess Kate Middleton is dying. Prince William cancels Godfather's funeral to be with her. Is it true? Would you please read into this? Her children can't lose their mum. And then again, do you see Princess Kate getting over her sickness? And there's others. I'll be honest, the way I read this, and I say entertainment purposes only, and people ask me why, because. Anyway, first of all, William loves her. They do love each other. Being brought up in that system, in that family, it might not be easy for anyone. Number one. Number two, as far as her health concerns, yes, I feel it's something serious. I keep on getting something. Okay, I'll just say it. I get something in the ovaries. I get something in the stomach area, possibly colon. The core. There's something going on there. And is it cancer? I can't say. But there's something going on. And the one thing I kept on reading, and it did upset me, is I don't see her having children, being able to bear children ever and yet again. Now, some people say, well, she only has three. But to tell a woman she can't have children, for her, that might be devastating. So I also feel she's weak. I do feel a 60-40 chance she gets through this. I don't see her bouncing back real fast. But I do see her 
making a recovery. Now, as far as the stuff about William and Harry, I've worked in the past with people from Fleet Street. Believe me, they will stretch a story as far as it can go. And sometimes they get in trouble for it. Uh, years ago, when Harry was a little, little kid, a paparazzi caught a picture of him peeing on the front lawn. And the headlines read, The Royal We. Well, the editor got fired. Because the family did not like that. The royals did something about it. So, can you always believe what Fleet Street is saying? I'm not sure. There has been tension. Yes. Is Catherine racist? I don't feel it. It's just that she's raised in one way. Meghan Markle was raised another way. There's a clash. Doesn't mean one's right, one's wrong. It's just a clash. Also, I do feel that Harry and William, in her own way, do love each other. It's hard. But also, they reunite and reconcile after their father's death. Now, as we know, King Charles does have cancer. I feel it's more serious than they're saying. Because... I see him abdicating and stepping down so that he can be there to see his son as king. I don't know long how, he'll, how long he'll be around to see that, but he will see it. And then we move on from there, and I feel Kate will be there. All right? Now... Can we just please send everyone, not just her, but everyone love and light and love, please. You know, this world needs it. To every nook and cranny, as I say. Okay, Peggy Jean, Congressman Garamendi, a salt of the earth rancher who doesn't fluster easily, was on the news saying that there will be graver consequences this round if a budget isn't passed, and if Ukraine part of the bill doesn't pass because we've used our stockpiles to help Ukraine and they need to be replenished for America's needs. He looked flustered and worried. Can you read on whether or not this legislation will pass and what will consequences be for America's safety? Okay, loaded question. First of all, they kicked it down the can, they kicked the can <laughs> down the road, sorry, and they passed a budget temporarily. As far as Ukraine, I still see Biden doing something. They're getting the money. Now, the whole thing, watching these MAGA people, it's like, we don't want to give our money to them. Why would we want to give our money to them? That's our tax dollars. Well, first of all, if they need to replenish the stockpile of weapons, Somebody's going to make money out of that. That's the Americans. It's in, it's in the Congress budget. So, make more whatever you need. But don't forget, a lot of the stuff that the Ukraine is getting, they're close, some of it was close to expirations. So, I don't see this whole thing about, well, we're giving our stuff to them. Well, I often wonder if these people ever had a history class about Europe, Russia, Ukraine, and the history since forever. And to say we're not going to give them anything, and then we have people like Elon Musk saying, let Putin win. And people like Trump, let Putin win. We can't let Putin win. Because if you were to take Ukraine, then what else is it going to take? What next? What next? It's not going to happen, people. First of all, I have said this, and I still say it. 
that within two years, Ukraine will be part of NATO. In order for that to happen, the war is over. I also say that Putin, for some reason, I keep on getting after April 1st, he's not going to have the voice he has now. I don't know if he's not going to be around, incapacitated, whatever it is. I don't feel he's in control. And when that happens, Ukraine stops. The, the war in Ukraine will stop. He's threatening about nuclears. He's threatening about all this stuff. We know the powers that be are not going to let that happen. I can also be the ETs because there have been reports of many sightings over Ukraine, over Gaza, and over Russia, more so than before. So they're not going to get away with They're not going to be able to do anything with that. So don't panic. Also, I don't feel Putin's going to be around. So, but the thing all about, we can't give them, look, if if we don't help them, we're going to get sucked into World War III. Or as Trump said, Biden's going to take us to World War II. Enough said. I mean, the guys, I mean, I'm serious. As far as Trump is concerned, the brain Swiss cheese. Please. Entertainment purposes only. Now, this is a really interesting question from Michelle Shelton. Can you look into the COVID virus and see if we will have it continuous throughout the year or will it be seasonal? My whole family has it now and got it last August too. We seem to get it twice a year. We are vaxxed and boosted. Thank you. While the rest of us are vexed because we've been vaxxed and boosted and still get sick. But when I've looked at this, I feel COVID is going to be around in different forms. It's not as deadly as it once was because we now know what it is. And I just get that there'll be different strains. There'll be different vaccines. Will it be completely eradicated? I don't feel it. I wish I was wrong. Maybe I will be wrong. I hope I am wrong. But I don't see it as a death sentence like it was in 2020. Now, I don't talk about this too much. But in 2019... December, I got very, very sick. I ended up being in bed for three months. I had pneumonia and I had a collapsed lung. I was losing my eyesight, losing my hearing. Um, I went to four specialists. Nobody knew what I had. They put me on all these different medications. And I could barely get out of bed for three months. Also... One of the last times when I saw, went before I really freaked out, was they put that thing on your finger for oxygen, and it was at 63%. I was terrified. So I called a healer friend of mine, and she was like, why did you wait so long? I'm like, I don't like to bother people. And so she said, you know, she meditated and said, you know, there's something... There's a virus I have never seen before. Never. It's very exotic, was her words. Well, it's exotic because they didn't have a name for it. Now it's called COVID. I have since talked to my doctors. They all said that was COVID. We didn't have a name for it. We didn't have anything for it. But you got through it. And one of the doctors said, well, I guess all the meds we gave you worked. I said, I'm off the meds. I've been seeing a healer or talking to a healer. So we worked about three weeks and things started to improve. Yeah, you know, I had to work with her. It wasn't just her made waving a magic wand. But there were some things, my diet, a lot of things. So when people say vaccines, please get a vaccine if you need one. I mean, 
measles, chicken pox, all these things are starting to show up again. I mean, the biggest fear is what's next? Polio is coming back? Anyway. So, as I'm sorry to go off on a tangent like that. But the whole thing about COVID and vaccines and all that, I mean, I've had all my vaccinations, boosters, and the doctor wants me to get, I think, a fourth one. Because, you know, he said, you're not a spring chicken anymore. And also, after a certain age, you're prone to pneumonia. And so I'm very prone to pneumonia. So, you know, I told them get when they get the next one, I'll do it. So that's what I'm waiting for. So I feel it's going to be around. I don't feel it's going to be as fatal as it once was. Okay. Again, sorry for going for the tangent. Now, Nancy V014. Hi. Any extreme weather predictions? I hear other readers mentioning volcanoes. I am going to the big island next week and a bit nervous as there is an active one there. Also, will we see power surges and outages? Thank you for choosing my question. Well, first of all, as far as the big island, I believe you're talking about Kona. I don't see it. Number one. Number two, my sister's flying over there when you'll be there to attending a wedding. If I felt something like that was going to happen, believe me, I'd be calling my twin and saying, do not go. I didn't say that. And I still love her. So, But then again, extreme weather. I mean, that's what we're all predicting, you know, and um, Zeladana asks, thank you, Arthur. My question is, what will our weather be like this summer? I'm in South Dakota where we get tornadoes. So a bit scary, especially since the winter weather has been so warm. Thank you. It has been nuts. I was talking to a friend in Kansas. She said things are, you know, one day it was in the 70s. And some of the stuff on our property is starting to bloom and grow. And then two days later, it's snowing. It's nuts. And when I did the show with Mel last week, we were talking about the weather. And we both agree that from now on, things are going to be extreme. Weather is nuts. So we have to be prepared. And the people that deny that this is climate change, what can we say? Send them love and light so they get it right. Okay? Now, there's nothing we can do. Yes, there is. We take care of ourselves. We take care of others. We, we put out most benevolent outcomes. You vote the right people in that believe in climate change. That will make a difference. So there's something we can do. And that brings up one of the last questions here. Patty today, as opposed to Peppermint Patty, I guess. I can tell that following politics and current events slows down my vibration to a lower frequency. But it's important to keep in touch with everything that is happening. And it's so darn interesting. How do we reconcile this? I know it's like watching an accident about to happen and you watch it. You can't keep your eyes off it. However, this is where you have to raise your vibration. This is where I tell everyone, when you start getting an anxious feeling and your vibration is going low, please close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Put your hand over your heart. Feel your heart beating. Close your eyes. Steady with your breath. And then you'll notice your heart relaxes a little bit. And as that does, so does your breathing. 
and do that for about five minutes before you pass out. And um, you'll notice you're much calmer. Either that or grab a brown paper bag and start breathing in it. But no, in, in all seriousness, this is where I keep on saying, suggesting for people to put copper on their body so that empathically, if there's stuff being tossed, you're not picking it up. You're shielded from it because it goes to the copper, gets grounded, and then not going to you. I mean, you could also do the old Buddhist trick. Well, it's not a trick, but putting salt in your shoes. That'll ground you. That'll protect you. There's like five reasons we do that. And one of them is it's purification. It absorbs moisture. And but one of them is each grain of salt represents ancestral connection. And so they're helping you walk on your path and you're taking their path and moving it forward. And that will bring peace. That helps you get grounded. That helps you get centered. Try it. I believe in trying little experiments all the time. Now, the other thing, I don't want to sound too preachy, but it is a psychic YouTube channel. The other thing we need to do in order to raise our vibrations is a sense of gratitude. Be thankful for what's in your life, including the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because sometimes it's the ugly that teaches us the lessons we need to learn to move forward. So in some ways, be grateful, be thankful. I mean, you can always go to my guided meditations and listen to gratitude if you want. But just before you go to bed at night, say thank you. Be grateful. You have a roof over your head. You had food to eat. You have a job. If you don't have a job, you're looking for one, but you're able to look. And at times there may be, seem like you have scarcity, but still be grateful for what is in your life. Because when you're thankful for it, you raise your vibration, you change your frequency, and then you can manifest what it is in your life. Also, while you're at it, you can be grateful to your guardian angels or to God that when you write a check for a bill, I thank God that I have the money. Thank you, guardian angel, that I have this money to pay my bills. And there'll be more coming in. Um, it does work. If it didn't, I wouldn't be talking about it. So you can try it as little experiments, but try being thankful for three days or four days or five days and, you know, write down your affirmations and say them throughout the day. There will be a difference. You will feel lighter. And when you start looking at the world through eyes of being happy and thankful for what's in there then we see what's going on in ukraine we can be thankful that we're not here on our soil fighting a war we can be thankful that we're trying to help the people survive this and they will at the same time now tomorrow is super tuesday so I am going to get on my soapbox and remind everybody, what else can we do to make this happen? Vote. Yes. Vote, vote, vote. Please. And tomorrow I'm doing a show with Mel. Believe me, I'll have my little sticker that says I voted. All right? Because that's how we make things change. That's how we change the vibration of everything with the right people. But also... Be thankful that we have a country where we can go vote. And I don't care what the propaganda says. Your vote does count. All right? I hope it wasn't too preachy. I hope it didn't bore you. 
but I hope you heard something that may resonate with you because there have been times when I didn't think I was going to make it, especially like when I was sick and I got through it. I had faith. And Mary also told me to be grateful that I was getting through it, that I wasn't going to end up in the hospital, wasn't going to end up on a respirator. And I was thankful. And I was thankful when I started tasting food again, because everything tasted like turpentine or pepper. And I was thankful when my eyesight came back, because I had to read my computer with a magnifying glass. And that's scary. And there are people that go through all that. So we have to throw them our love and light and, and just pure energy so that we're thankful that we got through it and they will get through it. You know, it depends on their soul contracts. But all I can say is we're not in this alone. We have a realm of angels and guides all around us that many of us don't see or we forget to thank them. That time when you almost turn into traffic and for some reason you're stopped. Think about it. That's divine intervention sometimes. Or you're about to make a phone call and you decide not to do it and you're glad you did. Or you're going to go somewhere and you get held up and when you get there, there's been an accident. And sometimes I was going to a Thanksgiving dinner a couple number of years ago, and I got stuck on my, my car broke down. And out of nowhere, somebody came by and, hey, I can, I can help you with that. And he fixed it. And he said, it's Thanksgiving. I didn't charge me. It's odd. So then as I was driving down Benedict Canyon, there was this huge fatal accident. Now, if my car had not broken down, I would have been part of that pileup. So I look at that and say, thank you. Because now I'm still here to drive everybody crazy. So enough said. So listen, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And I do give readings personal readings. So I give an hour reading or a half hour reading. If you're interested, check out my website, www.arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R, ease, E-A-S-E, your, Y-O-U-R, mind, M-I-N-D, dot com. And uh, just click the uh, book an appointment and we'll take it from there. Okay. And also thank you again for the new memberships and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the likes. And please put a comment. It helps with the algorithms. And in the meantime, take care of you. Take care of others. And what do I always say? Stay amazing. Okay? And vote. Bye-bye.